Rumors of my descent into madness have been greatly understated. Over the past few months, I have uh, given a lot of time and effort into what I would consider the end game of Linux distributions and systems management, and that is Nix OS. And before you say, Josh, you're an Emacs user, what about geeks? Maybe. Maybe in the future, it may be something that I look into. Nix, I chose over Geeks because of the wider community adoption. Um, is that the best choice? I don't know. But in the future, maybe Geeks is, is the end game. Who knows? In this video, I'm going to discuss, though, how I've set up my environment, how it's made development like this dream. It's, it's changed my entire perspective on environment management for development, where you can just enter these... Nick shells, and all of a sudden you have this ephemeral place where all of your dependencies live that once you get out of it, they don't exist anymore. It's pretty crazy. You don't have to worry about dependency hell. You don't have to worry about, do I have this package? Do I not have this package? There's none of that anymore. Just forget about it. Nick's kind of just changes the entire script when it comes to development, and we'll get into that as well. So before I go ramble on too much longer. Let's go switch over to my screen and I'm going to show you uh, how I've set this all up, how I've organized all my systems. And uh, of course, in the Emacs fashion, I have done it in a literate config. So that means one file, one file, and my entire system management lives in 2000 lines or something. It's pretty cool. Let's go over to my desktop and let's show you what I've been working on. All right, so this is my NixOS config. You can go check it out on my GitHub. It is live up there. It's got eight stars already, so go star it, go check it out. Within this directory, I have something called a readme.org. And if you are familiar with the org uh, syntax, you will know that I have essentially wrapped my entire config <laughs> in one literate file. So it is... 2300 lines long and in it I have defined all of my systems all of my machines my servers everything thus far there's going to be more of course uh, and in them you can go through and check everything that I've set up I'm on theological that's my main system here so you have like a readme just showing what is going on in the system. And then there are configuration.nix. This is interesting. This is where I have imported all of the different modules that I use day to day in a system. I've set the host name. I'm not gonna go through all of this, but you'll see that we have all of this set up for this machine and all of my different machines have different, slightly different configurations, but a lot of them use the same modules. It's very cool that you're able to set up all of these modules in one place and all of your machines just pull from them. And I, sorry, I think I'm underselling this. I can literally clone this repository onto any machine, run Nix rebuild switch, and any of my machines are then set up immediately. If you run multiple servers, this is huge. I know that most people don't have like a hundred ThinkPads lying around like I do, but if you do server management, this takes Ansible or Docker, and it kind of just, they're not relevant anymore when you get into Next. It's, it's, it's insane. Anyway, each machine has their own hardware configuration. So each machine is going to have a defaulted hardware config that's created upon first uh, installing Nix onto it. And then there's overrides that I've built for this particular machine that actually just work for the AMD GPU that is currently on this laptop. Pretty simple. There's all my other machines there. And then this is the fun part is my modules. So each of these is going to have my programs that I use on a daily basis on my desktop. It's going to have command line, TUIs. It's gonna have all of my Emacs set up, everything right here. One thing I'll say is that I'm using something called make, sorry, I can't type today make out of store. This thing allows you to have what um, people would call GNU Sto built into your Nix configuration. So one of the things that people dislike about Home Manager, for example, is that you have to run Home Manager switch when you are making changes to your configuration. It's kind of annoying. 
So instead of that, you can just use this sort of configuration that you will have all of your dot files within your Nix repository. And those files will essentially be system links into your dot config or wherever they need to live on your system. You can make the changes in those files and immediately they show up. So there's no home manager switching. There's no any of that. It's really nice. It's like new sto, GNU sto without the sto. I love it. What else we got in here? Uh, we got theming. We got how I set up my Git. Uh, we have browsers and within browsers, something cool with Firefox is that you can actually set your plugins in Firefox. So you can have every plugin that you need on a machine. You don't have to go out to the Firefox plugin repository to get them. They're installed just with this home manager. Uh, is this home manager? I, I don't even know. Extensions dot packages. Again, I'm new to this, so the next language is something you have to wrap your head around. I am not an expert at this whatsoever. There's been a lot of me asking Claude to be like, hey, how do I do this in Nix? There's been a lot of learning. So there's a reason that I haven't posted in three months, guys. <laughs> For development, uh, this is the fun part. So we have various languages that we've set up. Um, I haven't even set up them because I've started to use something called DevEnv in my individual uh, projects. We'll talk about that as well because it's super, super cool. We have my Doom config. And like I was saying, so you have your configuration files in dot files. So Doom lives here. This is literally my Emacs configuration. Uh, you can go clone it from my GitHub, but this lives within my Nix uh, configuration repository. And if I make changes in here, I generally work on the readme.org. They show up immediately. And then I can just take those files, save them to, to Git, commit them, and just say, I actually just added uh, Forge to Maggot. Like I'm loving Maggot right now because of uh, so many different reasons. People have said, use Jujitsu. I don't think you can if you have Maggot. It, it's, it's, it's crazy. Anyway, I'm just going to commit this. Forge added. I can't type today. Okay, and then close out of that. Very simple. It's really a dream. So simple, honestly. Not really, but I can't emphasize how exciting this is to somebody that uses dot files. Because classically, I think this is the paradigm shift here, is classically, you have to have a dot files repository. You have to have scripts to set up any new machine because you're going to inevitably forget about state. Nix changes that entirely that you have declarative state management in your configuration. So this lives in a version controlled repository anytime I make changes to it. So for example, the other day, I needed to install a VPN onto my machine. When I did so, I messed up the internet somehow. Like the, the Wi-Fi wasn't working properly. I figured out what the issue was, I fixed it, and that fix lives forever in this version controlled repository. I don't have to worry about it anymore. I don't have to remember what I did. Another example, Kmonad. I use Kmonad on my laptop keyboard, so it, it uh, essentially mirrors the same key layout as my custom keyboard here. Kmonad is a pain in the rear to set up on a traditional machine. You have to restart it. You have to do all this different stuff. I'm going to just check for, I'm just going to search for my Kmonad uh, setup here, right here. This, whatever, 20 lines is all you need to set up Kmonad on any system. It's amazing. You don't have to worry about forgetting I think I'm underselling this, to be honest with you. But anyway, that's that's my whole configuration. You can go see it on my GitHub. I'm not gonna go through it all. It's literally programmed, so you can go read everything. All of these different parts of the README are then tangled into different files. So it's, it, it is one file, but it's also a conglomeration of different files. So if I go into my uh, modules here, for example, like all of these have the different 
uh, Nix files in them. They're just tangled through this readme. So it's it, everything's in one place, but it's also properly organized in the, the Nix repository. Another thing we're gonna talk about is development. So this is really the thing for me that's been a dream. This is a, a UI library that I'm currently working on. When I open up a terminal in it, you'll see all of this. What this is, is the environment for this project being entered. So the environment for this project has what's called the DevEnv flake. So I use something called DevEnv with DeerEnv. DeerEnv allows you to just enter into a directory and your environment to set up automatically for you. DevEnv is where you essentially define all of the packages that this project needs. We're gonna go into that for a second. So in here, you can have like your secrets configured. You can have your uh, packages that you need for the pro project. I have, it's a Go temple project. So I'm using like air for hot reloading. I'm using uh, Tailwind CSS. I'm using all of this different stuff for minifying CSS and uh, age is how I actually do the secrets management. Within this, you can also have scripts. So like I have something I'm gonna show you here. This is how I've been developing. I can start a environment where there's these three scripts running and I don't have to do anything else. Everything's hot reloaded. I have all of the uh, templating and stuff automatically reloading as I change files. It's a dream. It's, a lo it's, it's lovely. I, I've never had such ease of development in my short development career, we'll put it that way. You also have the ability to then just load environment variables. So like here I have environment variables set with age and they live in this environment. As soon as I enter them, they're there for access for the project. As soon as I leave, they're no longer there. It's, it's amazing. I love it so much. Again, I feel like I'm underselling this, but it's so cool when you realize what's going on in the background. Another thing I'm gonna to touch on and there's a lot of benefits about Nix, but one of the biggest ones is that it makes software development, I don't wanna say democratized, but just so easy in, <laughs> it's not easy, but it, it makes it easier. It makes deployment of software and putting packages out there a lot, a lot nicer. This project, for example, is a very simple Go project. It's like 220 lines of Go. And what it does is it creates secrets for my repositories. You saw in the previous example, I had the environment variables. This is how I create those environment variables. So what it does is it uses age to encrypt secrets, puts them into a specific file in the project, and then those secrets can actually be version controlled because they are encrypted. I love it. It's, it's a very nice way to do secrets management. One thing that this has in it, and you'll see this in a lot of software repositories nowadays, is a flake.nix. What that does is defines how this project is built, where it lives, and then when it goes out to the remote repository, how you can actually pull it back into any computer. This is a public repository that lives on my GitHub. And what I do is I can just run secrets and I'm just going to say alias secrets here for a second, because that's actually the command that you run here is nix run my username go secrets dash dash. In that I can say secrets add, I don't know, uh, test.age, all right? Well, I'm gonna actually have to generate first because it's going to generate the secrets repository. This does not live on my machine. This is a piece of software that lives on GitHub that I'm able to pull down with Nix run and run this piece of software. And you can do it too. You can literally go out to this repository, generate a secrets directory in your next project, and you can start age encrypting secrets with this piece of software. Okay, secrets generate. And again, you saw the alias. This does not live on my machine. This is in GitHub. Secrets add, I don't know, I'll just do test.age. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay. You'll see now in this repository, there's a secrets directory and there's a test.age and that's actually encrypted with age. And you can just 
use this anywhere. It's amazing. But it is such a dream that I can literally put a piece of software onto GitHub, onto a public repository, and anybody can run it. I can run it from any machine in the world. This exists for you to run right now. I'm just going to delete that directory here. Just make sure everything's good. One thing I will mention is that you don't actually need NixOS to do these last two examples. NixOS is a way to declaratively manage machines. It's a, it's a way for you to create configurations for any one of your computers and have that in source control that you can just pull down and let's say your computer gets stolen tomorrow. The headache of setting up a new machine is taken from like, well, for me, it probably was like three hours or something like that to set up a machine in the past. Now it's like 20, 30 minutes. It takes it down substantially. Again, if you have like one computer, this isn't going to be that big of a deal. If you have a lot of servers that you're running various web services on, this is going to be mind blowing. A lot of people use NixOS as their like home server OS because Nix packages is amazing. There's over 120,000 packages. I think it's the biggest package repository in the world that you can just go search right now. There's my, there's the uh, URL in the bar right there. And you can literally just go pick a package and configure it into your system. So I'm, I'm looking at NATS here because it's something that I've been working on with uh, the front end data star and all that. Maybe I'll make another video about that in the future, but these packages are just right there. I don't need to go out and build from source. I don't have to do anything. They are in Nix packages and they're super easily accessible. You can use the Nix package manager on essentially any operating system. Mac is huge that they have Nix Darwin. A lot of people manage their, their Mac systems with Nix. Nix is more than just a operating system. It's a package manager, it's a language, and it's also how you can create these development environments. Flakes, it, it's, again, it's a rabbit hole. It is, I haven't even really gotten that deep in it, but it's changed the way that I look at software development. It's changed the way that I look at managing my computers. It's made things simple in the most convoluted and complicated way but it has made things simple. The Nix package manager allows you to ephemerally install packages to your system too. Something that I even touched on and I don't even really use that much, but if you want to test out a package, for example, I'll give you an example. My girlfriend the other day needed to use Chrome to access a website. She doesn't have Chrome installed on her Mac. I installed Nix, the package manager onto her Mac computer, I installed Chrome in a Nix shell, did what we needed to do in Chrome, and then got rid of it. You can do that with Nix package manager on any system. It's pretty darn cool. I'm gonna be probably making a lot more videos about this in the future because it has really shifted how I understand computer management, package management, development, all of these different things. I'll show you how I deploy apps using Nix on a remote server. I will show you all of these different things because it is something that I am very happy to be learning and spending time on, even though it is a large time sink. <laughs> it is something that is a massive learning curve, but at the same time, I think that it's going to be the way that Linux systems are managed into the future. And if it's not Nix, it'll be something that is declarative and very easily reproducible. Have you been using NixOS? Let me know in the comments down below. Tell me your favorite part about it. I probably missed a dozen different things, but this is just a introduction and a kind of, hello, I still exist. I've just been going down rabbit holes. <laughs> so as always, God bless. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for checking this out. And if you want to support the channel, go download my book at mountainthebook.com. Uh, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.